So before we start on the JavaScript side of things, I want to go ahead and build this backend paginated list of articles that will give me a JSON output. So what, what we're going to do is go ahead and build up the database and the table within the database that we need. And then we'll go ahead and actually start to build this backend in PHP. And again, if you're using another language uh, and you know how to do this in your language, go ahead and do that so we get a, get a similar output. But the key here is that we have this query string because what we're going to be doing is Ajaxing to this file and we want to specify where we want to start and where we want to end. So at the moment I've included the query string start as one and count as two. So this would be the initial load of the first two articles if the step was two. And all the step is is just basically how much you want to display initially and then when a user clicks load more, how much you then want to load on top of that. So what we're going to do is if, for example, the user clicks load more, we're going to set the start to two um, or three rather, and then the count to two. So that would show the next two. So that's the kind of idea we want to get around. And we'll go ahead and build up our database and then start to look at the output here. And then we'll go ahead and afterwards build in the JavaScript. So let's go ahead and open up MySQL. So we'll just go ahead and log in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, create a database here. So let's create a database for this test. So create database, uh, load more, we'll call this. Okay, so now what we're going to do is use the load more database. So that's changed. And we need to go ahead and create a table in here. So I'm going to create a table and I'm going to call this articles. And I want this to have an ID field, a title and a description. So we're going to be displaying the title and the description out on the page as well as the ID actually. Uh, and this is going to be done with the sort of templating that we're going to use as well. So I want this to be not null. I want this to be the primary key and I want this to be an auto increment. The title is going to be a varchar and that's going to be 200 characters. And the description is just going to be text. Oops, so let's go ahead and change this. So the ID needs to be an integer. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and just show tables. So we've got our articles table. And let's go ahead and just describe that articles table. So there, there we go. So what we're going to do now is start to insert some data. So let's insert into this articles table. And we want to go ahead and put a title and a description in for each one. So for the first article, let's just say article one, and for the second, uh, or for the description rather, we'll say this is a description for article one. So I'm going to go ahead and do this 15 times. So when we return, or if you're doing, if you're following along with this, go ahead and enter this 15 times. Change the numbers. If you do have an already populated article list, that would be great. But I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make 15 of these. Okay, so once we've inserted 15 articles, let's just go ahead and select everything from the articles table. So we've now got our 15 articles. We know that we can connect to this and go ahead and output these based on the paginated uh, query string that we talked about earlier. So let's jump into our text editor and start to write this PHP code out. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is change the content type of this output since we are actually outputting this as JSON. Let's go ahead and use the header function to modify this. So we go ahead and choose the content type, and this is going to be application slash JSON. So now we'll get a different response header sent, uh, a different header, a content type header sent to uh, the user's browser. So let's go ahead and connect to our database. So we, we instantiate a new PDO uh, object, and we're going to go ahead and provide the query string in here to connect, or the string to connect in here. So we're using MySQL. The host is localhost. The database name is oops. Load more. And we go ahead and we provide a username and a password. And we're done. So let's just go ahead and test that this works and nothing's uh, errored, so everything looks fine. If you just check your network tab, you can click here and you can scroll down to see that the content types changed to application JSON. So now we can go ahead and start to test this out. So the first thing I want to do is uh, store 
an empty array just to store articles when we loop through them. Uh, or not loop through them, but when we go ahead and fetch, fetch all of the articles. So we, we'll just declare this up here anyway. What we now want to do is go ahead and we want to determine if the start or count queries are available. So if the um, if, if the get super global contains start or count, we want to assign these start and count variables uh, a value. So for example, I'm going to have start and let me just set this to zero by default. And I'm going to say count and I'm going to set this to one by default. Now the reason we start this at zero is basically because when we uh, do a query, we're going to use the limit uh, clause to actually limit the, the amount of uh, records that we get back, basically. And because when you limit, it's zero indexed, we always need the start to be zero. And that means that if the start has been provided in our browser as one, we need to minus one from that every single time this is provided. Let's go ahead and do a ternary operator just to keep things um, nice and clean. So let's just do an is set. So we'll do an is set on the get super global, and this is start. So if this is available, what do we want to do? Well, we want to use get start and apply this value to this variable. Now we also need to be really careful because this is a user provided value. We need to go ahead and cast this to an integer to uh, prevent SQL injection. So otherwise we want this to be zero. And as I mentioned, uh, we need to minus one from this. So let's just run through this. We've got a start variable. If the get super global is set, we then use the, the get super global variable minus one. Otherwise we just de default to zero. So for the count, we do a similar thing, but the only thing we don't need to do is minus one off this because a count is a count. It's not indexed by anything. It just tells us how many results we want to get. So let's go ahead and do dollar underscore get count here. We do exactly the same thing. Again, making sure that we cast this to an integer to protect against SQL injection. And then the default here is going to be one. So by default, if we don't provide anything, this is going to provide one record. So what we're going to do now is actually construct the query. So we create a variable called article, and this is going to be the query method of the PDO object that we have above. Let's go ahead and add the query in here. So we're going to select. Now we're going to do things a little bit differently because we also need to do another query to get the total amount of articles. And we're going to be using SQL calc found rows as well as an asterisk to say that we want all fields to be returned. So this looks a little bit weird, but we're going to say SQL calc found rows asterisk. So we're basically saying we want to, along with all of the other data, get the amount of rows in total. And we want to do this from the articles table, the table we created a moment ago and we want to limit this by x comma x in this case the uh, start is going to just be the start variable that we created a moment ago and this is going to be the count which we created a moment ago as well so up here is the start and count we've now used them in the query so we know that this is going to uh, perform this query so like I said we also need to grab the total amount of articles as well so I'm going to create a variable called articles total, and this is going to be another query. But this time it's just simply going to be select found rows as count. So we're changing the name of this um, returned function. And along with this, we want to go ahead and immediately fetch the results. So we want to fetch this as an associative array. So once we fetch that as an associative array, we can then immediately access the count value. So if I just go ahead and echo this, we'll see what this uh, results in. So this is 15. This is giving us the total amount of records that we created, and we know that we have 15 records in here. So now that we've done that and we've got the actual query to return the articles, let's go ahead and actually look at outputting these. So what we want to do is we want to check if we have 
any results first of all. So we need to know if we have any results. So in this case, we use article row count. So this is going to return either zero or a positive integer. What we also want to do is store the article's count as well. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say articles count equals. So we're assigning that but also checking its value at the same time. It's useful to have a count of what's been returned if we need to use this in the future. So what we're going to do now is inside of here, we're going to assign a value to the empty array that we created up here earlier. So in this case, we're going to say this is articles or article. So this query that we created here, and we're going to fetch all. So we're fetching all of the results and we want to fetch these as an object because we're going to put this into uh, the JSON encode um, function and we're going to store this in an array. So let's go ahead and build up this array. In fact, let's go ahead and just do a print R on articles just to see that we're getting the results out that we expect. And yeah, we are. So we've got um, two here because we're starting at one and counting at two. And remember that earlier I said if we're starting at three and counting at two, we get the next two. So we get three and four here. So we're now successfully paginating this. Uh, if, for example, the step was five, we would get five results back like this. Let's go ahead and change that back to two. Now let's go ahead and actually output this as a JSON, str uh, as a JSON string so we can actually use this in our JavaScript. So we're going to go ahead and echo JSON encode, which will encode this, change it to a, um, a JSON string. Very, very handy indeed. So we're going to put an array in here because we want to store a few things. The first thing we want to store is the items. So the items that we've just print out on. So let's go ahead and do that. So items is articles. So this on its own isn't enough because we need a few other things. So when I refresh here, you see that we've got an items JSON string and um, we've got uh, ID title description. You can see this is formatted nicely in my browser. You can go ahead and download a Chrome extension or something like that to go ahead and format this nicely for you. Um, just otherwise you'll just see a, a sort of uh, an, a string of, um, you know, JSON and it won't look too pretty. So uh, I'm formatting this within the browser and this is how it looks. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and add a few more items onto here because what we also need to do is determine if this is the last page of articles. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll test this out using by changing around the query string. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if the start plus the count is larger than the total amount of articles. So the start up here and the count, if it's larger than the total amount of articles, and then we'll know if this is the last record or not. So we're going to say if start plus count is greater than or equal to articles total, then this is true. Otherwise, this is false. So let's go ahead and check this out. This should show false because this isn't the last page. If the start, for example, remember we have 15 articles. If the start was 14 and the count was two, you'd expect this to be at the last page. And it, in fact, that does show it is. Now, the reason that we do this is because when we get to the last uh, set of results, we want to hide the load more button with JavaScript. So the load more button that we were clicking before, we want to hide that. So let's go ahead and add a couple more on here. We're going to do the, we're going to output the start and the count value just in case we need it. So we go start, and this is more for debugging as well. If we want to see what the start and uh, count positions are, and there we go. So when we refresh now, you can see that the start is 13 and the count is two. Now it says start 13 because remember we've minus one. So this is what would be fed into the query. Hence why I said it's probably good for debugging. So now that we've done that, we know that this works. Let's just revert this back to one and two. Now all of this works. We know that, you know, stepping an extra five or we'd get five results and doing the start as six and the count as five, we get the next five. So we know that this is all working. So now that we've done this, what we can actually do is start to focus on building the JavaScript up to actually use this to go ahead and pull in more articles as we need them.